welcome back to the show and today our corporate game changer is one special person he's the executive director of finance and strategy at credit direct limited he, with vast experience in financial control retail banking people and performance management Chukuma is not just a high-valued employee of his firm, but at a very young age already sits on the board of his company, formulating and deploying game-changing strategies for his firm. He calls himself a problem solver, and I agree. Today we have with us Chukuma Mwante. Yay. He <laughs> said, yay. Good. You're cherry yourself. Good to have you on the yeah, show. I'm, I'm really happy to be here. Nice. How are you doing today? Brilliant. Good. Chukuma, you have the most... I'd say the most unconventional education story I've heard. I mean, for someone that is so high in the corporate, highly placed in the corporate sector, you know, it's, it's, it's mind-blowing to know, while I was reading up on you, your profile and all of that, to know that you actually never sat in the four walls of a university, university before you started your career. Mm -hmm. Guys, that is amazing. Do you, would you believe that Chukuma practically learned everything he learned about accounting and finance through the internet, taking courses on the internet, and then he got his, um, I think he started his um, ICANN certification, he started your exams right after secondary school. Yeah, so right. you had known you wanted to be an accountant. Yes. Once you got out of secondary school, you started your exams and by i think you said 22 21 21 you got your first job yeah what made you what made you think you were going to be so successful without going through sitting in a university like us all yeah i i, I think what was important was I, I realized i needed an education um in the modern world getting an education does not necessarily mean sitting in the four walls of a, a, a university, university as we know it today. Mm -hmm. What was important was that I took the learnings related to the discipline I wanted to, to establish myself in and try to be the best at it. Um, it was, it, it, you know, uh, my, my philosophy, which I got from my brothers, were, was that you don't, there's not one way to the top. Mm -hmm. I knew I wanted to be at the top. I knew I wanted to be a really good accountant. And so my focus was on the learning and not on how I went how there. How you got there? Uh, it's about, have you caught the principles, the nuggets, the everything about your course? I guess that's what you focused on. Yes, then. I focused on it. Um, for me, it was I wanted to be an accountant, and I was told if you're going to be a good accountant, you have to be a chartered accountant. As soon as I got wind of that, I realized I could enroll for um, the pre-professional level with the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria. And so, with my secondary school certificate, it was enough for me to start the ATS scheme. Um, it was a good period for me, so I, I passed those exams really quickly. And then by the time I was 21, I had taken my final wow. um, exam. Yeah. Well, I think that's amazing. You said something really profound when we were chatting before the show. You said your parents were very educated yeah. and hardworking, mm -hmm. but you, could, you saw growing up that that was no ticket Mm -hmm. to success you weren't your family wasn't as comfortable as you would have loved yeah. your family to be so knowing that you know it's not just education and hard work what else would you say is the recipe is required for the you know success recipe you know so we play around with the word being street smart mm -hmm. loosely in in, in, the, in the corporate world so it's not really who is the hardest worker but who is the smartest worker i believe in in the, in the value principle and that that for me is getting the best out of time, making the best decisions, getting value out of everything you do. So you could be a hard worker, waking up 6 a.m., busy with activities at work, but not delivering the right value at the right time that the mm. organization sees. And right value at the right time. At the right value at the right time. So a, a lot of time, and I see it affect a lot of people in their careers. They say, oh, I'm working so hard, I'm not getting promoted. But I ask the big question, what value are you hmm. giving the organization? How, how, how are they supposed to know what value the organization needs from them at that specific time? How, I, how do you point that out? I, I think if you align your, your, your actions or what you do on a daily basis to the, to the objectives of the organization, organizations are really smart structures, you know. They, when they see value, they recognize value. And, you know, performance is measured using the bottom line of an organization, for example. So if what you do in one way or the other, helps the organization achieve it's, its profit objectives, you're, you're going to be noticed. It's, 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 I hear you. I hear you. Mm -hmm. And um, looking at your profile as well, and also from our discussion, I could tell that on every job you've had, even when you were working in the civil service, yes. you always had 
unusual promotion like yeah. within when you were in civil service within three years you were promoted twice yeah. i think yes on your on your current job within six years you moved from manager to an executive director you're yes. sitting on the board with owners of conglomerates and mm -hmm. all of that mm -hmm. he's a big boy yeah, well. <laughs> but you know my question is you definitely know something about rising up the um, career ladder really fast when you're in an organization what would you say are maybe two things that you are quick to do when you get in a place to, to get that you know that attention? You know how to get the right attention you know in places. What I, do you do? I, I, like I said earlier, I think the first thing is to understand the objectives of the organization, and then fit your everyday work into the attainment of those objectives. To be honest with you, it's, it's not. I, I so I, I believe I spend maybe an extra hour thinking about the, the organizations I've worked for than. Maybe most of the people who work there, I, I, I sleep late, I wake up very early thinking on how can I mm. do this better? How can I see you here at home and you're thinking? Yeah, it's annoying. My wife complains about <laughs> this. But, but so the honest truth is yes. I, I, for example, don't believe I should present a report the same way I presented it last month. Not because mm. the last time wasn't good, but I believe okay, I can do something different, I can do something better. And if you work with a, an excellent group of people, or if you work with a team, that believes in you and you can share that kind of mindset with, it becomes even much more easier because you get people to support you in achieving, achieving your, your objectives goal. that align with the objectives of the organization. Amazing, amazing. I mean, we would have to run off soon, but there's something I have to ask you. You currently sit on the board of your company, and I know that the people on that board are, there's no small boy there. Mm -hmm. And you're quite young, you're way below 40. Yeah. What sort of posture? do you recommend or do and do you adopt when you're in the midst of such you know people that are you know way older way more accomplished how how do you make sure your voice is heard in I, such I, I i think first and foremost i consider myself privileged it's an honor to sit with the kind of professionals that i sit um at, at board of credit direct with um i also know they they also have respect for me so the first thing is that the respect is mutual and i really learn a lot from them again Aligning with the objective of an organization is extremely important. So long as your thinking is tailored towards helping the organization grow and achieve its set objectives, regardless of your age or regardless of how young you are, your contribution, your is contribution will be respected, yes. I see. Yeah. I see. So I, I, that, that mindset you have of daily thinking, how can I change things here? How, I mean, I've learned that from you. As an employee, if you make it a, you know, deliberately focus your mind on how can I do things better yeah. in this room, you will stand out. Thank uh, you so yeah, much, Chukuma. Yeah. It's been mind-blowing speaking with you. He's not going anywhere yet. When we return, it will be game time. Yes, it's going to be the finance folks against the event folks. Let's see who's going to win. See you when we get back. a blisco choice of today it's a golden embellished wax fabric the abstract design composes of geometrical elements that creates a playful and contemporary image i know i'm gushing about my blisco right today i'm excited funke are you ready for the game chooks i have a feeling the song game is going to go so well with yes. both of you and it's really easy so okay. you're going to give the, the word is love so you just sing us a line from any song that has love. It could be baby, the hey. lullaby, it could be a whatever kind of song. I'm okay. gonna give you two seconds. Go through your music library. Love, 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 love. And we will start with Funke. Okay. My love. Oh no. There's oh, only she's such you a romantic. in my life. Come on, girl. Hey. Jukes. I love you. You, you love, love me. me. Your kids will be proud of you. Too. Funke. <laughs> Love is a wonderful thing. Hmm. Love is a wonderful thing. Chooks. What's love got to do? Got to do with it. Okay. My baby, my lover, my sweetie. Chooks. 
Love wants it. Love wants it. That is all. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, you can do this. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. Chuck so is the winner, guys. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and you win <laughs> amazing fabric from Blisco. Congratulations, you. Oh my gosh, you. okay. And you sound oh, such an amazing girl. I'm so happy. Oh, thank you. Oh, congratulations, Chuck. Thank you. It's okay, Funke. I'm sure you do more game changing stuff and come back really soon. <laughs> thank you so I'm much, guys, for coming on the show. Chuck, Funke, we've learned so much from you, thank and it's been amazing having you on here. Keep doing big things, of course. Keep changing the game in your respective spaces. Thank you very much. You. And of course, till we meet again and see you again, don't stop changing the game in whatever you do. Keep being the best in whatever space you find yourself. Bye.